Another week, another win, New Orleans Saints fans. I know we haven't had a ton of these this year, but I feel really good about this one because to me, it feels like it was the a complete game that the New Orleans Saints needed. Not only was the offense good, not only was the defense good, not only was special teams good, everything was good for the New Orleans Saints. And I know that there are some people who are going to be nitpicky about some of this, but I think at the end of 2023 and heading into 2024, we should celebrate this win. So start off today's video by giving me a like, shouting out Jonathan Abram, shouting out Elante Taylor, who got his first career interception. Show some love, like the video if you're excited for the Saints win and if you're pumped up for 2024 to be a great year. So here's what the final scoreboard looks like, the box score numbers as you guys like to call them. Derek Carr, pretty good day, 24 of 32, just under 200 yards, but no interceptions. He was going to, he had going into this week, two back-to-back -back weeks with three touchdowns. We saw him get close to a couple more, start some drives that just quite didn't end, but two touchdowns, still pretty good. Jamal Williams led the team in carries, be, uh, or in rushing yards and rushing production after Alvin Kamara left early in the game at halftime for an ankle injury and did not return to the game. Juwan Johnson finally had his breakout game, Mr. Reliable. He finally did it, man. He finally freaking did it. Eight catches, 90 yards, one touchdown. That is the Juwan Johnson we all know and love. Baker Mayfield actually had a pretty good game, but a lot of those yards coming in garbage time. 20, 20, or 22 of 33, 309, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Rashad White, limited on the ground, 11 carries for 42 yards. Trey Palmer led the Bucks in receiving. Four catches, 84 yards, one touchdown. Mike Evans, the New Orleans Saints own you. Marshawn Lattimore owns you, and you had the absolute straps put on you once again. But let's get into an injury update around number 41, Kamara. Like I said just a moment ago, he left, and he was ruled out with an ankle injury. Tried to return, but was unable, and that's coming in from Dennis Allen in that postgame press conference. So obviously, Alvin Kamara's impact was missed. However, the Saints were still able to get it done. They were able to get some decent production out of Jamal Williams, not just on the run game, but in pass catching as well. Obviously, you want Alvin Kamara back. Hopefully, you get Kendra Miller back next week as well, and you can have that three-headed monster that the Saints thought that they were going to have at the beginning of the season. But that is the injury update around Alvin Kamara. So, guys, this is why you subscribe. If there's any other notable updates around Kamara, around Nephew Sewell, who's going to be getting a second opinion for his injury, and Landon Young, who is believed to avoid a major injury and is believed to avoid surgery, this is why you subscribe. We talk about all the injury updates. We talk about news. We go live. We have watch parties. During the offseason, we go live once again. And we crossed over 25K. So shout out to all of you. Subscribe for more Saints content. So let's look at the updated NFC playoff picture. And this is shown, this is as the Seahawks-Pittsburgh Steelers game is going on. Last I saw, Seals were up 17-13 to over Seattle at halftime. So we'll see how those things shake out. The Saints can actually still get a wild card spot if the Seahawks do lose that game. But if the Saints want to make the postseason and they want to win the division, if you win next week and the Panthers beat the Buccaneers, you win the NFC South. So you'll kind of have a quick little hot streak towards the end of a couple, you know, meaningful games that are going to lead to a playoff push for New Orleans. The Eagles lost today against the Cardinals. Right now, if you win, that's the team that you're taking on in the uh, first round of the playoffs this season. So let's look at the offensive stats for the Saints versus the Buccaneers. Total offense, 310 yards, 4.4 yards per play. Really, really good day for the offense. Passing yards, 202 yards in the air, 25 of 34. Like we said, that was between Taysom Hill, who threw a few passes, Derek Carr, who threw a majority. In terms of carries, you got uh, Lynn Bowden took uh, – no, Lynn Bowden didn't take one. It was pretty much just Jamal Williams and Alvin Kamara splitting carries. Obviously, Kamara did not return after halftime, didn't even take a snap after halftime. Um, went back to the locker room during the first drive for the Saints. So Jamal Williams did a majority of the work on the ground. No turnovers, perfect day out there, and in time of possession, you won that, and that was one of my keys to victory. You have to start fast and end faster, and I believe the Saints started fast and were able to also end the game fast. In terms of total offense for the Buccaneers, you see it's almost 350 yards. That's pretty crazy, but a lot of these numbers, a lot of these stats kind of come in the back end when the Saints were up 20-3, to 3. so you know that's something to kind of consider here. Uh, the passing yards, 22 of 33 for 292. Baker Mayfield did suffer a shoulder injury, was able to get up, 
We continue the game, but he took a nasty hit um, during the two-point conversion in the fourth quarter that was ultimately successful. Got overruled because of a penalty. They tried again, didn't get it, so that's when that happened. Turnovers. The Saints, four turnovers. Elante Taylor got his first interception of his career, so shout out to him. I want you to show him some love. We also got the first ever uh, fumble recovery from Isaac Yadin and Yadam in his career, so I want to show you guys to show him some love in the comment section. They dominated the time of possession, 23 minutes, 22 seconds. Great day. Demario Davis had an awesome fumble recovery, took it back for about 20 yards. What a day. Saints win. We're eating one of these. We got some dubs. We got our bowl. We're going to put some dub seasoning in our dub bowl. We're going to eat it. We're going to scoop it up, and we're going to eat and we're going to continue to feast. But guys, I want to also tell y'all about our awesome sponsor, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy, and it's my favorite app to talk about. It's my favorite app to use in the mornings when I'm having our, you know, morning meetings, if you will. So I like to go and put down projections on not just the NFL, but college football as well, college sports as well. It's so easy to play, and if you use our code CLNS at prizepicks.com slash CLNS, you'll get a $100 deposit match. I'm going to have that information in the comment section in the description of this video because you're my best friend and because I absolutely love you. So here's how you play. You just pick two or more players. You choose more or less based on their projected numerical stats. If you get it right, you win money. It's pretty plain and simple. So I encourage you guys, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Plug in that promo code CLNS to get a $100 deposit match. Shout out to Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. All that information in the comment section and description because I love you once again. All right, so I wanted to talk about this awesome catch that came in from Jawan Johnson because it felt like this really lit a fuse up under the Saints' ass. It was awesome. So it extended the drive. Derek Carr back, you know, deep in his own territory. He, he's waiting. He's waiting third down and just boom, pumps it. Jawan Johnson, fingertip catch, brings it in. Maintains possession, does this little somersault move, which, fun fact, I learned this on Twitter. Shout out to Jeff Nowak. Um, he learned this from Chris Godwin when they were at Penn State together, which is, you know, kind of funny how things really work out like that. But then he's able to maintain possession, finish the somersault, pop back up, and move the damn chains. I mean, this was such a cool play. It was so fun to see Mr. Reliable get involved. It was so fun to see this team get the ball, and spread it out to a lot of different pass catchers. Of course, I wanted to see Chris Olave be more involved, but it's okay at the end of the day because they didn't need his services. The Saints were able to get it done, and the Saints defense absolutely hounded Baker Mayfield today. Like we said earlier, 309 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. I mean, he is a player that, let's call it how it is, he's been pretty interesting this year. He's been a very intriguing player, and he's been very hot. A lot of people have been counting him out. A lot of people have been kind of just disregarding what he can do. But he's put up some really good numbers this year. And he's led the Bucs to be on top of the division. And after this win, they're still on top of the division, unfortunately. But, again, you win this week, you win next week. The Bucs lost this week. If they lose next week to the Panthers, your Ann Baker Mayfield is going to have to go and watch another playoff series on his couch. But guys, there's been a lot of hate and there's been a lot of interesting comments about the punter Lou Headley. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. Um, I do want to shout this stat out. This, this chat stat is pretty interesting to me. So Lou Headley is tied for second in Saints franchise history with 30 punts down to inside the 20-yard line. That's tied with Thomas Morstead. And I understand that a lot of y'all have been underwhelmed with Lou Headley. A lot of y'all haven't liked what you've seen. But this guy consistently is putting it inside the 20. That's something that I honestly didn't know. I didn't realize how consistent he was at doing that. But he has been great, he, at least in putting the ball in the 20. Of course, there's been some shorter fields. There's been some longer punts that he's had to try to make. He's had some really, really good punts go his way. He's had some really crazy things not go his way, but I will say this, Lou Headley has been consistently able to drop the ball inside the 20 and give the Buccaneers a, or not the Buccaneers, but whoever the opponent is, a long field, at least 80 yards throughout this entire season. So I just want to give that chat stat a little bit of love. Shout out to Lou Headley. He's, you know, the Aussie rookie, tatted up head to toe. I, I think I'm a big personal fan of his. I know I wish he was a little bit better in terms of the production, but Man, it's been, this was a fun game, and it was a fun year, and it was a really good time. So I want you to grade the Saints' performance A, B, C, D, or F. For me, I'm going B plus or A minus. 
F it. A minus. I'm going A minus. It's the end of New Year. I was really impressed with this team. It felt like they played a full four quarters. And guys, if you want to check out any of the highlights from this game, I tweeted out a bunch of them throughout the game. I'm also been tweeting out a lot of jersey swaps. I have uh, some pretty cool ones. My girlfriend just sent me a hint. Patrick Queen, Jamar Chase in the Saints uniform. You want to see it? Go check my Twitter out. It's pretty dope. Uh, Trace Gerard 48 on X, formerly known as Twitter. Saints win. Who that nation? I hope you had a wonderful 2023. I hope you have a wonderful 2024. Call a freaking Uber. Be safe. Y'all have a good evening. Y'all stay golden. See you next time.